Long ago and far away, in enchanted lands across the seas, lived kings and queens, princes and princesses, good fairies and wicked witches, ferocious giants and gentle dwarfs. Their adventures and stories have been told for hundreds of years. Open the pages and listen to the words and you too can join the magical world of Once Upon a Time. new clothes. Once upon a time, there was an emperor whose greatest pleasure was to buy and wear lots of new clothes. This emperor didn't take much interest in his army, and he wasn't much bothered about driving out in his carriage or going to the theater, except to show off some of his new clothes. When his servants were asked, where is the emperor? They were much more likely to reply, he is in his dressing room, than to say, the emperor is busy in a meeting. The city where the emperor lived was very gay. The people who lived there were very fashionable, and there were always plenty of visitors. One day, two swindlers arrived in the city. They went around telling everyone that they were weavers and that they were famous for making fine, patterned fabric. And the most incredible thing about our fabric, they told the people of the city, is that it is invisible to anyone who is stupid or unfit to hold his job. It wasn't long before the emperor got to hear the rumors about this amazing cloth. What a fine outfit I could have made from this cloth, the emperor thought to himself. But for once, it wasn't just how fashionable he would be that was concerning him. Wearing that outfit, he thought, I would be able to find out which of the people around me are really suitable for their jobs. It would instantly become clear which of my courtiers was a fool and which a clever man. So the emperor had the two swindlers summoned to the palace. They were very humble in the presence of the emperor. Your majesty. But knowing his weakness for new clothes, they sang the praises of their amazing woven cloth. It will be an honor indeed to make some cloth for you, your highness. Of course, the emperor was easily persuaded. I must have a suit of clothes made from this fine fabric, he declared. And he gave the swindlers a great deal of money to get to work. The swindlers bought two huge looms and started to work immediately. But there wasn't anything to see, because of course, there wasn't really anything there. The swindlers asked for some very special gold and silk threads. And the emperor sent over a whole chest packed full of them. The rascals put them straight into their own pockets. They didn't need any of the thread for weaving their fine cloth because they weren't really doing anything. The emperor wanted to know how his fine new suit was coming along. But he had a funny feeling about going to see the weaving. Everybody in the city knew about the magical powers of this amazing cloth. Of course, he thought to himself, I have no doubt about how clever I am, or that I am the only person suitable to be emperor. Even so, I think I'll send someone else this first time. The emperor decided to send his trusted old minister of state. He's a wise man, and there is no one more suitable for his position. 
When the minister arrived at the swindler's workroom, he opened his eyes wide in surprise. Oh, my goodness, he thought to himself. I can't see a thing on that loom. But he was careful not to say so. The swindlers begged the nervous minister to come closer and admire the fine detail of their weaving. Look closely, see the delicate weave. He stared and stared, but there was nothing there. It's finest silk. Can it really be that I am that stupid, he thought, or that I am not fit to hold my job? I have never thought so, but I certainly don't want other people thinking that. So when one of the swindlers asked him, Do you approve of the fabric, sir? The minister replied, Why, yes, it is indeed very fine. Even though he couldn't see anything at all. The minister of state listened carefully to the description the swindlers gave of their fine fabric. Then he went back to the emperor and assured him that the work was coming along very well. Now the two swindlers asked for more money and more threads, and the emperor readily agreed. They pocketed these things straight away and carried on working on the empty looms. The emperor decided to send another of his most faithful ministers to inspect the work. The poor man was horrified when he entered the workrooms and saw the empty looms. How can I let it be known that I am a stupid man, not capable of doing my job? He thought to himself. So when the swindlers began describing the colors and design of the fabric, he paid special attention so that he could go back and describe it all to the emperor, which is exactly what he did. The whole city was talking about the fabulous cloth, and the emperor decided it was time to take a look for himself. He took his two trusted ministers with him and some other faithful courtiers. As soon as they arrived, the ministers who had visited the workrooms before spoke up. Aren't the colors magnificent, your majesty? said the minister of state, pointing to the empty loom. Don't you admire the design? asked the second minister, certain that everyone else in the room could see the cloth. The emperor nodded and smiled, but all the time he was thinking, Oh dear, oh dear, I can't see a thing. Can it really be that I am so stupid and not fit to be emperor? Beautiful colors, don't you think? Fine cloth, wouldn't you say? But out loud, the emperor said, Why, yes, the cloth is truly magnificent. It certainly meets with our approval. All his other courtiers nodded too, yes, and yes. murmured their approval. Ah, it's most fine, your majesty. Because each one was sure the others could see the cloth. Ah, it will be wonderful. None of them wished to appear stupid in front of their fellows. Ah, yes, yes, quite. <laughs> It's time to turn over to side two.